don't mind talking about it. I, uh, I, uh, but this is, this is, okay, here it is. Um, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is set to expand at Universal Orlando. Now, um, I personally don't like the Wizarding, I don't like Harry Potter. Um, but, you know, the other guys can either, can say what they want about it. I, I just, I like, not a fan. I like Harry Potter. I just don't want to see, I, I, I've but said it before, I don't want to see other rides being torn down to make way for, something else i want and to if see you don't, if you want to add to a park add to the park i'm okay with that just don't tear down parts of the park to do it yes and if you don't already know um the park itself or the jaws ride is being closed and the speculation is that this is because of the harry potter land and it seems like that's the case because they said they're expanding um they have not announced a time frame but it's going to take years for us to create something on the scale we scope to envision said Tom Schroeder, Universal Orlando spokesman. Details will be announced over time, said a Universal News release. Um, so I, I guess they're going to maybe get rid of the parking lot behind Jaws and just combine the whole thing and then make it one big Harry Potter land. I don't know how exactly that's going to work, um, but I am a little uh, upset that they are getting rid of the Harry Potter land. No, I mean, excuse me, the Jaws, Jaws. Jaws and putting in the Harry Potter land. Sorry. Yeah, so. But uh, if you like Harry Potter, then it's awesome. Um, you know, they're going to, it's going to be big. You Jaws, know, they're uh, going to make just their, such, it's, it's such a signature thing for them. I just, I, I hate seeing this. I really do. I mean, if there's, if there's one I, thing that you think of when you think Universal, you think the Jaws ride. You I think don't know Jaws. what to tell you, boys. Don't know what to tell you. And I've said it before, it's new to somebody. So even though it's been there since the dawn of time, it's still new to somebody. Yeah. So I think they need to keep it. Plus, yeah. you know, I like it. Yeah. yeah, everybody likes it. So, oh, well. Oh, so, okay, so moving on from that, uh, let's see. Jaws is to permanently close at Universal Orlando. So the closing date for this is January 2nd. I guess that's a lot. It officially closes on January 2nd. <sighs> So I guess it closes on January 2nd. Like, they the didn't give us that, much notice. Exactly. That's what a lot of people are upset about. Um, on a, on a, I guess a, a semi-funny note, um, there's people actually protesting this, and they are standing in front of the uh, area. Occupy and holding, Jaws. No, Occupy Amity. <laughs> Occupy Amity. With shirts and the whole nine. <laughs> So it looks, it looks really, it looks, it, I mean, it's kind of funny, but I mean, the, seriously, I, I really wish they weren't getting rid of this because you're right. It's such a staple to Universal. You think of Universal and you think of this and all the original attractions that you think of besides E.T. have gone. There's no more Ghostbusters. There's no more Back to the Future. There's no more King Kong. No more King Kong. Earthquake is no more. It's disaster. disaster. So, you know, it really stinks that, um, you know, that they're getting rid of this. Um. I'm glad they let the fans know so they could ride it. But that's the one thing I do like about uh, Universal. They do let you know in advance that the rides are closing, which I think is cool. I really appreciate the fact that they they uh, think we should know, you know, the rides are closing or what have you. That's really cool, but I just don't like them closing this. But the release even says, and I'll read it here, it says, We know you love Jaws, and we do too. Uh, it's been an amazing attraction, and after terrorizing the waters of Amity here at uh, Orlando for 20 years, it's a very important part of our history. So they've got that says, so we've got a couple things planned to ensure that we remember and honor it. We know it's hard to say goodbye, which is kind of their way of saying stop complaining. We know it's hard to say goodbye, but we can't express how excited we are about the new, innovative, and amazing experiences we are going to be bringing you. So it's even harder for them it, to it, say they're, they're sorry. I it's, it's, so, <laughs> it's Hold so hard. me now. <laughs> Tell me to say I'm sorry. Ooh. I just want you to know we love the Jaws ride. <laughs> so they're uh, they're I think they're covering a lot of bases here by do. basically saying there's nothing we can do about I it to deal with it. it up to you. Be excited about the new stuff coming out. <laughs> <laughs> that was Mickey Updates tribute to Chicago. <laughs> William, next, what are we doing? Twenty five or Peter Cetera. Peter Cetera. We all love Peter Cetera. Oh my gosh. So yeah. Oh. It, it's it stinks that they're closing it. With any luck, we're going on um, Saturday. This Saturday, Saturday, Saturday yeah, we're going. and we're gonna we're gonna ride it. We'll, we'll film it whether Roller, they want Grinch us to Miss. film us or yeah, not. Yeah, we're definitely we're gonna film it. I didn't even think about that. It's a good you know. idea. So we'll film that. 
So I want a part of history. I want to take something from there. Yeah. You know, I want well, the I want the I want the burnt shark. I want the whole burnt shark. Here, I do too. Here, here, here. <laughs> the one that gets zapped. The ride. So um, <laughs> here's another cool story. Um, now, um, this has been uh, um, this I knew about this a while ago. I think we talked about this a while ago. But uh, Legoland has announced their water park details, and um, they're going to have a build a raft lazy river, which looks really cool. You actually build the raft, and then you go on the lazy river. So do you pay um, by piece? Yeah. <laughs> Tube slides, Always body slides, by piece. and an interactive water play structure. Uh, and for Mark, they have the Duplo Safari. Oh. Mark loves Duplo. Because I can't handle the real Legos. He has to handle the big boys. Got to have the big ones. Gotta the Duplos. The, the yeah, Duplos. You, you choking on the real Legos? It's so <laughs> funny because you, you, you always think the Duplos are like the cheap ones. They're not. They're like the little baby ones. <laughs> What do you mean? Uh, the, the, yeah, you, they're, you they're thought sh- they were the cheap Legos. They're not. They're the little. They're, they're the huge. big they're ones. They're like regular Legos under a microscope or something. They're no, just, they're, Duplos are huge. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They look like they're under yeah. a microscope. They're these ginormous. Oh, okay. Pieces of plastic. So I got you. And they I don't gotcha. taste like the red ones. Don't taste like cherry. So and the yellow ones don't taste like lemons. I'm t- <laughs> so let's tried. see here. Lego gummies. I tried. We're very ex- okay. Is scheduled to open in time for summer 2012. Excited about that. Uh, we're very excited to share plans for this amazing new attraction at Legoland, Florida. General Manager Adrian Jones. True to our mission, the water park attraction has been designed for families with children ages 2 to 12 and will add hours of water play to an already full day of full day and move Legoland, Florida into a multi-day experience for vacationers, which is what they wanted to do be- to begin with. They're also talking about a Legoland hotel, just like a Lego Lego hotel, which sounds really cool. Oh, uh, now that does. I got to stay there. Yeah, if, they, if it really looks like Legos on the outside, that would and be I sweet. sleep in a Lego bed. I'm the all additional... They have, all, they have all the pieces. They're, they just got to get the addition, just gotta, just yeah, the additional also adds another... <laughs> excuse me. The a additional... Giant, I can see a giant pile okay. of Legos. <laughs> the <laughs> additional... instruction book. <laughs> bacon, bacon, bacon. Craisins, mm, craisins. Bacon. The additional also adds another great value proposition for annual pass members. Admission to the water park attraction is included with all new Legoland Premium Pass. The with the all new with an all new Legoland Premium Pass, which offers twelve months mission to Legoland Florida and seasonal access to the Legoland water park. Single day Legoland Florida guests may upgrade to a water park attraction ticket for twelve dollars per person. Children under three or three dollars. The premium pass is now available for, for purchase at Legoland.com or select. AA Auto Club Group branches. Key areas of the Legoland Water Park include the Legoland, the Lego Wave Pool. Families can catch a gentle wave or simply cool off. And this perfectly sized wave pool where the so waves the wave are just big enough Legos? for all ages to enjoy. Yes. Twin Chasers. <laughs> hurt. Sounds painful. Friends ride tubes 375 feet down an intertwining pair of enclosed water slides before plunging into How a far? flushing. How far? Three hundred and seventy-five. Three hundred and seventy-five feet down. Yes. Holy mackerel! Into a refreshing pool below. Splash out the thrill seekers, of the family can ascend to the tallest point of the water park attraction and choose from one of the three unique slides, then speed down a sixty-foot drop and splash out in the water below. It's called the wedgie maker. Jokey see, so see Joker that? Soaker, a fun interactive playground with various lengths, heights, and types of slides that offer something different. For every member of the family, guests can wade in the surrounding pool and be surprised with a torrential spill of from a 300-gallon bucket. That sounds like something Ed will like. That sounds like, uh, where have I seen that before? Aquatica. Every, oh. every water park in the world. Aquatica, Aquatica, Aquatica. That's what I'm thinking. Build know. a raft, river. This, this park sounds painful. Now, this is my favorite thing out of the whole thing. I just I, I don't know why I like this, but I like it. Build a raft, river. Families can imagine, design, and build a unique Lego vessel and set afloat on a maiden voyage around the thousand-foot-long lazy river set amongst playful Lego friends, flowering vegetation, and palm trees. How much do you want to bet that 90% of the rafts don't float? I'm going to say, what if you suck at building Legos and you <laughs> build a raft that just <laughs> sinks to the bottom? But what, what happens if your Lego raft gets stuck to the and, side? I don't know. <laughs> And like you're on mid-ride. just unclip something. And, well, what if you're on, <laughs> if you're on, mid, like, what if you're on one of the slides? For Mr. Mark and your, and your Terry. Raft gets stuck. Something for me? We have something for Mark Terry here. It's, it's it is called stuff. <laughs> the Duplo Splash Safari. Yes, this is for Mark Terry. The Duplo Splash Safari. Toddlers will rule at this water play area with shorter slides and interactive, larger than life Duplo creatures. I'll, I'll go. 
<laughs> the newest attraction is just one of many ways we will continue to evolve Legoland Florida over the next several years, said Jones, creating a multi-visit proposition for family adds another dimension to the Legoland Florida offering. Adding the water park attraction will fulfill this criteria as well as offering unique attraction in Central Florida. Now, if I'm not mistaken, um, right there was already a water park right next to Cypress Gardens. I think you're mistaken. I, 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 no, I think he's actually right. All right no, I trust that. There, I think there was. Yes, I think there be, was. But, but it might, I, I don't remember the name, but it was yeah. there. Cypress Waters. Yeah, something like that. Wait, did you re- is that really what it's called? I, no. Dude, I was denying making... that it even existed, and then oh. all of a sudden you're believing whatever I come up with for a name. No, no, no. It's, it sounded like a believable name. <laughs> well, of course it did. I think it was like maybe Water Country or something. All good lies are plausible. I don't know. No. Water. Okay, so moving on from that to some news that excites me a little bit. Star Wars Weekend's uh, dates have been announced. Yay. Um, Yay. The dates for Star Wars Weekend's at Disney Hollywood Studios. Uh, it starts May 18th through the 20th, May 25th through the 27th, June 1st through the 3rd, and June 8th through 10th. It seems like it's a little shorter this year because it usually goes until July, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's a week earlier. It's a week earlier. Okay, I think you might be right. We're going. So we're definitely going. Um, a celebration is is, is uh, in town, too, uh, this year. It's in Orlando. Uh, Star Wars Celebration 5 or whatever is in town, too, so we'll definitely be going to that, too. Got to check so, that out. Got to check that out. Anything Star Wars, Okay, so here we go for some new dining experiences at Disney's Hollywood Studios. New fantastic dining experiences at Disney Hollywood's Hollywood Studios. For a limited time, it's Disney fantastic. are offering reserve seating for Fantasmic and a new dining experience to go with it. Reservations may be made from today, December 1st, by calling 407-WDW-DINE. It's dinner at theater. That on speed dial. It's Disney's dinner theater. <laughs> reserve seating will be first come, first serve. Uh, let's see. It's just a. Sh- it's just for a short while, December 18th to the 31st, with the reservation starting December 1st at 407 WDW Dine. Uh, a credit card guarantee is required. Pickup is at Men and Bills Dockside Diner, uh, which is uh, right there by Gertie's and all that. That little. It's an Echo Lake. There to the lake. Yeah, Echo Lake. Um, Dockside Not Diner from 11 a.m. with Echo Base. Through uh, 11 a.m. Wait, million dollars from from 11 a.m. through one and a half hours prior to your selected show time. You choose which performance you'd like to attend when you order your meal. Pick up your meal at your convenience, and then you're on your own for an easy picnic lunch or dinner. Uh, you might want to try more than one of the picnic goodies, but your fantastic seats are based on the number of guests in your party. Entrees order must be equal to or greater than your party size. So I don't understand. So I guess well, that means if you got four people in your party, no, I understand that. Then, th- but then you order you, at least four. What I'm confused about here is, do you get to go back multiple times? Because it says you might want to try more than one of the picnic goodies. Does that mean no? It's like I an all-you-can-eat thing. I don't think so. It didn't just say anything it did, about it, all it, you can it eat. Did, it didn't. It uh, didn't say. It didn't right. say. Look at that. It didn't say yay or nay. Did you see what it says in there? They got a cranberry salad. Of course. So. And yes, this is part of the Disney dining plan. It's a quick service entitlement. Uh, here's what you can order. So I think what we're looking at here is um, I think I think you get, when you put the credit card down, you get the seat reserved. But you have to still buy the entree at the, uh, at the, uh, the, mill and, the men and bills, Dockside Diner. So you still have to buy the entree. It's not you don't pay for the entree in advance. You still have to buy the entree. That's why they're saying entrees ordered must be equal to or greater than your party size. So you would go and buy the entree and then at whatever time you want to do that. So uh, here's some of the entrees. Um, they have a fried chicken with maple glaze, sweet potato, and baby spinach salad, broccoli and cranberry salad, and cheesecake. Uh, that's fourteen ninety nine. They have a veggie wrap. With avocado spread, taboule, avocado, and tomato salad with citrus vinaigrette and a chocolate cake for $14.99. Olive oil poached salmon with couscous salad with dried cranberries and peas, roasted beets, and apple salad Can and key lime pie. Anybody guess the price of that one? Fourteen ninety nine. That's fourteen ninety nine. I see an ongoing theme here. Uh oh, not all of them are fourteen ninety nine. Teriyaki and orange marinated beef mm. with udon noodle and caramelized vegetables. That does look really good. The dessert looks good too in the middle. <laughs> seaweed salad. Ooh, love seaweed salad. Uh, I don't know with about ginger that. Ginger carrots and mandarin orange cheesecake. Oh. I'll trade you my uh, 
seaweed, seaweed salad. salad for your uh, cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> fresh, <laughs> fresh fruits, brie, dip, strawberries, and focaccia bread is eleven ninety nine. And by the way, the one before that was fourteen ninety nine. But it's changing. The fresh fruit, brie, dip, strawberries, and focaccia bread are eleven ninety nine. Chocolate dip pretzels, strawberries, and marshmallows with chocolate dipping sauce, nine ninety nine. Uh, kids meal with turkey and American cheese wrap and strawberry yogurt, apples and carrots with ranch dip and seven layer cookie bar, five forty nine. Seven layer cookie bar. Mm. Mm. Kids meal power pack, marshmallow layer, goldfish crackers, strawberry yogurt, string cheese, apple and carrots with ranch dip, Graham and a seven layer, layer cookie bar. Why do you want to give your kids more energy? Bacon layer, dragon's layer. <laughs> um, so, so those are some of the the items at uh, at the uh, the at uh, the the fantastic uh, dining uh, extravaganza. Uh, we'll call it the dining extravaganza. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. So, might I get this right? You get your food. And then yeah. you, you go over to Phantasmic and you can sit down and, and it's like is it like the dinner theater? You get to e- eat the chicken I, while you watch the show, or I do guess, you? I guess so. Or does buying the entree just include that uh, you get priority seating there? Or I think buying. I think you have to book it in advance, but when you buy the entree, um, you get the uh, you get the seating, and or when you book it in advance, it includes the seating, but you have to buy the entree too. But. But the guarantee that you'll buy the entree is the fact that um, you have your credit card on file and, and the seating and all that stuff. So they're going to charge you for it anyway. You better yeah. get it and, and have it. Yeah, you better, you better eat it. They probably charge you like 10 bucks or something. Eat it. So It's good for you. Okay. So moving on from that to some really cool news that I might actually check out this year. I haven't decided what I'm going to do for this yet. Um, Disney Crest celebrates New Year's with interactive fun at Downtown Disney. If you're looking for a cool family-friendly event to ring in the New Year, you might want to check out Cyber Celebration at Disney Quest at Downtown Disney. The event was very popular last year, so they brought it back for another go-around. From 8 to 1 a.m., kids are entertained with a DJ and dance party, plus unlimited access to all the games and Disney Quest attractions, including Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters, Virtual Jungle Cruise, which I love, and Cyberspace Mountain, which will definitely make you sick. Uh, for those who can stay awake <laughs> for the clock strikes midnight, there's a confetti drop and a festive party favors. Party goers also get a coupon for a pizza, hot dog, chicken, Caesar wrap, or hamburger plus chips and soda. If you purchase tickets ahead of time, you can save ten to forty five ten dollars, forty five dollars advance purchase or day of is fifty five dollars. Call including tax. Call 407-934-7639 to so reserve tickets. So it's obviously it's a closed event for that uh, Disney exactly. Quest has. For and it. let me repeat that number again. That is 407-934-7639 to reserve tickets. So you're right. It's a closed party for uh, kids and adults, I guess, to come to Disney Quest and have fun. Um, I think I'll just stick to Epcot because I always have a blast at Epcot. I haven't been to any of the parks for... Uh the, uh, Mark will, I think I, I, I see it in Mark's future that he might be attending Epcot for <laughs> New Year's. Um, and if he does, the first stop on the, uh, there, there, and it's like a tradition, the first stop at Epcot when you get there for New Year's is always the Mexican tequila bar. It just, it, it's, <laughs> it's just tradition. It's where you go first. You don't go anywhere else but there. Fantastic. Chips and salsa. <laughs> Uh, maybe some guacamole with that, and uh, and some tequila uh, samplers, yeah. And then it's uh, and then it's and then eventually you make your way over to France for some champagne. Well, there's champagne everywhere, but it's 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 ridiculous. There's so much drinking. Uh, not that I promote drinking. I'm just saying there's a lot of drinking. Okay. Um, <laughs> Drink up. Okay. Walt Disney World is Drink going up. to expand uh, the Wide World of Sports. Uh, Disney announced plans Tuesday to expand the Wide World of Sports complex. Officials at Walt Disney World said additional playing fields are planned as, more, as well as more lights, digital video boards, and audio systems. They said the enhancements will provide athletes with a one-of-a-kind ESPN-style sports experience. The expansion, the expansion plans involve adding 25 acres to, 200, to the 270-acre complex. The project should be completed by early 2012. Uh, the new playing fields will be able to be used for football, soccer, lacrosse, and field hockey. Um, personally, this doesn't interest me too much because I don't really know half the time what they have going on at Wild World of Sports. Have you ever been to the uh, complex at all? 
I've yeah. been there a couple of times for uh, sporting events. And when I say sporting events, I mean uh, I went there for uh, to watch the uh, the World Cup. Uh, and I went there to uh, see some baseball and stuff like that. Uh, watching the World Cup there was pretty cool because they had it in 3D and they had like a like a deal where you paid so much and you got all you could eat food and it was really cool. <laughs> so it was really cool. Always uh, comes back to food with you. It does because I'm all about the food. So it was really cool. All right, uh, <gasps> Cali River Rapids will be closing for refurbishment in January. Not a big deal. It's going to be cold in January. You probably don't want to ride it anyway. But from January 23rd to February 10th, uh, it will be closed. That's another thing, too. The uh, water parks usually close about this time of year for cleanup and refurbishment and all that stuff, too. So keep an eye out for that. I don't know why you'd want to go to the water parks at this time of the year. But um, if you do, um, you're going to uh, find out that they're closed. Like that one group. Because they close. The, the people go in the ice cold water. The polar bear, oh, the, yeah, yeah, polar bear group or something. They just were at ice actually, and they just did something at ice. They just did a, um, a whole uh, thing at ice. They did uh, their little polar bear thing at ice, and and uh, you know they went through in their bathing suits and ran through ice and bathing suits, and that's the whole deal. So uh, I could do that. I could probably go through ice in a bathing suit because it's cold, but it's let's just say it's a dry they ran. cold. Okay, yeah. it's a dry cold. I don't. The fact that these people jump into cold water is just beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> so coming uh, from Vermont, water is very can get very very cold. Yeah. Yeah. But any colder than thirty two degrees, and it's ice. So moving on from that, wait, uh, wait. we're gonna take a break. Wait, I, I I got one more news story. This um, I haven't heard much on this, but uh, through the twenty fifth and the thirty first, and we're gonna go at Disney's Hollywood Studios, where they usually have Sounds Dangerous. Uh, some of the old Comedy Warehouse people are gonna doing a family friendly version of of what their their show, their improv show at Disney's Hollywood cool. Studios. Cool. So that's something if you like that, the Comedy Warehouse. There you go. From Pleasure Island, the Comedy yes. Warehouse. Let's do it. See a lot of the old actors. We're definitely going to see that. Okay. So uh, moving on from that, we're going to take a quick break and go into our sponsors real fast. Uh, we want to thank the uh, hostingguys.co.uk for sponsoring us. And uh, if you need any hosting, make sure you check those guys out, the hostingguys.co.uk. Check them out and uh, get your hosting, uh, shoutcast, website, whatever you need. Uh, they have the hosting for you. So you have a radio station on there with them, I do you? have a radio station on there. Walt Disney World Tunes is streamed with those guys. So awesome stuff there. Uh, make sure you check out at voodoo.com for the friendlier way to find apps at voodoo.com. And a show is coming. Trust me. App I talk to the man who does it. It's coming soon. Um, com. At voodoo.com for the friendlier way to find apps. Go to at voodoo.com and buy some apps. So get the apps through there. Um, and we also want to thank uh, Central Florida Segway. I know we were calling them Orlando Gliders, but now they're called Central Florida Segway Adventures. Um, that is the new name that they have uh, gone with. Um, Central Florida Segway Adventures. Um, Liking it. They are doing uh, Segway tours on iDrive and Celebration. Uh, as of right now, they're doing them on the weekends. Um, I did a tour on Sunday on iDrive. It was really fun. Uh, we actually drove all the way down to SeaWorld, uh, got off at SeaWorld because we were on iDrive, and then went in, rode Manta, and came back out, and, you know, we got back on the Segways and cruised around. So uh, it was really cool. Um, check them out. You can do a tour. Uh, you know, they, they see all kinds of cool stuff. Um, if you go on there and you use the promo code, Mickey, Mickey you will actually get a discount with those guys. So go on to uh, Boston Gliders. Uh, dot com and uh, check those guys out and uh, you can reach them at 866-611 uh, let me see there where'd the number go uh oh it disappeared on me uh, 866-611-9838 so you can reach them at 866-611-9838 and uh, you can get your your segway on and and go out and have a good time on the segway mike beckham is an awesome tour guide uh, he will take care of you, make sure you're safe, and have an awesome time at the same time. So definitely check that out, uh, Boston Gliders. Also, make sure to check out globalescaperealty.com if you're looking for a vacation home 
a nice uh, vacation spot uh, here in Florida to vacation at for your Disney vacations. Uh, you don't want to do a hotel. You want to do a little something bigger for the whole family. Um, vacation homes are great. Uh, you can rent one for a week and have your whole vacation here and uh, do all kinds of stuff. Um, also, if you have a vacation home to list, uh, check out globalescaperealty.com and list that on the site. So, uh, moving on from that, uh, we kind of talked a little bit about the SeaWorld thing at the beginning. Um, I want to kind of go into that uh, at the beginning, and then um, we'll give our experiences, because me and Ed went uh, about two weeks ago to SeaWorld, and then we did a follow-up trip uh, last Friday, which was just a night trip, so Mark could see some of the shows and stuff. But um, but uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and talk about uh, our experiences with... Uh, the uh, the holiday stuff at SeaWorld. So uh, we were invited last week to a holiday uh, extravaganza at SeaWorld, which is really awesome. Um, we got in. We got a free quick queue pass. We got some really cool stuff. We got a little Manta flash drive here that I'm holding up to the camera. The two gig that was really flash cool. Drive. Yeah, we got a free uh, mug from SeaWorld. Um, just all kinds of cool cent stuff. Refillable ones. Ninety-nine cent refillable mugs, which is really cool. You got a lanyard. We got a lanyard. What else? A media lanyard. Uh, just all kinds of, of of crazy, crazy stuff. Um, but it was an awesome night. Um, we got there. Um, you know, our parking, everything was taken care of. We got to go in, and they they wanted us to see all the holiday stuff. Now, uh, we got in. Uh, went straight to our little area, which was right by the water, and they had food and things like that for us there at, at this area. Hot chocolate, coffee, decaf, hot cider. Hot cider. The hot cider and Cookies. the chocolate. Hot chocolate was really good. Hot cider was really good as well. Uh, just a lot of cool stuff there to eat, and I'll actually throw a picture up of the food. Just I had give a me snack. one second here. Oh, it was so good. Oh, cannolis, little chocolate filled um, cannolis and if you can see cream that puffs. There. There's a little picture of the food that we had at uh, at Sea World. Uh, you can see it on there. Let me throw up another picture. This is my my favorite. Has to be their 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 when, Christmas cookies. I would recommend when talking about Christmas food cookies. not to say you're going to throw up pictures. Just say you're going to put up pictures. I'll put up pictures. Yeah. <laughs> throw. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna. Up I like the cookies. Just, you can yeah, see I'm the. Just going some you pictures can, you on can, here. <laughs> you can see the cookies right here. I really like the I'm cookies. They're pictures. great. Uh, so. Just really cool stuff. It was really nice. Um, they closed off this little section for the media people. Uh -huh. We got to go in, and we got to, we actually got to meet um, some really cool people. The uh, uh -huh. president actually, of SeaWorld was there. I have there. a picture of that, too. We saw the president of SeaWorld His at name's SeaWorld. Terry. He was really cool. Really nice guy. There's a picture of us with Terry. Really nice guy. Uh, really cool to talk to. Just had a blast, uh, you know, just talking to him. You know, just, you know, just seeing how much he loves working at SeaWorld and, and – and how much love he has for his park. And, you know, hearing him tell us about uh, the brands, the bands, brews, and barbecue was just really cool. Hearing his excitement and all that about that was just really cool. Um, but the coolest thing, I think, that, that night that uh, we, we got to do, besides the food, which uh, we got to do a lot of because there was all kinds of food, not just desserts. There was chips and salsa and, and other foods available there as well. One of the really cool things that we got to to see while we were there, and I don't have a picture per se of the of this, but um, I have a picture of the trees non lit up. Uh, we got to see the uh, sea of trees. You should have a picture of the sea of trees. What about the pictures? I uh, we'll take. I'll I'll take a look. Uh, so we got to see the sea of trees. This is the trees non lit up, and I will look up a picture on here. I think I have one on here. Of the trees actually lit up, but this is a really cool show. Now, this is something that Sea World does. Um, they do this uh, every year, and uh, let me throw this up real fast. Let me find a good one right here. I'll throw this up so you can see uh, what this looks like. And they basically have these trees in the water, and they light up and dance and do all kinds of stuff to music. And it's just a really cool show. And that night, they had a young man that was standing next to us um, who actually got to. Uh, countdown and then say light the lights and they lit up the lights and they had the guy there that runs the show 
And then they had it, of course, dance to the music and all that stuff. And I got video of this. And if you haven't seen the video, it's it's amazing. It's, a, the, it's the really trees cool. Trees have got thousands of lights on them, and and they said that each light is individually operated. So that's why they can all change colors, and they can put patterns up on the trees and stuff like that. And yeah. Just multicolor patchwork and. Let me see if I can show you a pattern here. And all this other stuff. It was it was amazing to it watch. It was it's it's well, really the you know twinkling. It really uh, got me in the holiday spirit. Uh, it's an amazing show. Uh, you know, it's just really cool to see something like that. You know, not to knock what, what Disney does for the holidays, but I just don't see anything of this caliber there except for, like, the Osborne lights. Um, but, you know, to make them to dance like this, the whole tree thing, it was just really cool. It was a really cool experience. It was a really cool show, and, and it was really awesome. So we saw that, and uh, then they brought out some special guests for us. Uh, they had special animal guests uh, there for us to check out after the show was over. And I have some pictures of us with, with certain animal guests. That's There's a Ed with the parrot. Um, I know you can't see this on the if you're listening, um, but if you check out the YouTube feed, you can see this stuff. Uh, here's some other pictures of us with the stuff. It was really cool. They had a seal, a sea lion, excuse me, and uh, Oogie, I think his name was. Augie. Augie? Augie. Ed said it was Oogie. It's Augie. Augie. Okay, so Augie was his name. Tomato, and they had a tomato. parrot. And then they had a sloth, too, which looked really cool. Uh, the picture of the sloth there. Really cool stuff uh, at SeaWorld. They had all these animals out to greet us. The sloth and was so cute. He was really cute. He was looking up at the sky. It was really cool. The whole time. Um, so that event was just really cool. Um, now I'm going to take it back really just a nice. little bit. And talk about the SeaWorld Christmas celebration and kind of what all they have going on there. Um, we had our fun. We got to have our meal and all this stuff. Um, SeaWorld has a lot of stuff going on as far as their Christmas celebration is concerned. They have a tree in the main, uh, the front area of the park. Oh, as soon as you walk in, there's a large Christmas tree that looks beautiful at night. Um, and one of the really cool things that I like that SeaWorld did, um, this is probably my favorite part. Uh, and Mark, of course, knows what this is going to be. Food. The holiday specials. Food. Um, the the holiday special foods at uh, that the different restaurants had, which Disney doesn't really do anything like that. Um, it was really cool. Um, they had all kinds of different meals. Uh, I'll try to run through uh, all the meals that they had uh, there. Uh, we started out at the Spice Mill. Or no, not the Spice Mill. The Sea Fire Inn, if I'm not mistaken. Was it the Sea Fire where we started in? Yes. And they had a nice turkey meal, mm. which was awesome. Uh, they had turkey with mashed potatoes, and then they had a nice uh, cranberry stuffing, which is really good. Now, and then for dessert, now, they, had now, a, now, now, now. they had a cranberry, or excuse me, a eggnog cheesecake. Oh. And then they had this really awesome devil's cake. Uh, it was green and red uh, cake with a nice uh, cream cheese icing. It was really good. Now on the mashed potatoes, they are going back to add. If yeah. You, if you saw that, that whole mashed potatoes on the plate had a whole stick of butter in it. Yeah. Oh. The, the but, there was so much butter in the mashed potatoes. They were delicious. <laughs> they were super, super delicious. You know, Paula Dean was cooking for him that day, I guess. I, I think she was. I honestly think she was. So then uh, after that, um, we went to the uh, we went to Mango Joe's. And they had, um, and I didn't get a picture of this, I apologize, but they had a, like a bread bowl filled with mashed potatoes and then gravy and then it had like roast beef on top, which was really nice. delicious, which was pretty good. The beef was a little tough, but the, but it was actually a pretty decent uh, uh, meal there. So that was really cool. And then we had two other um, meal options uh, for the day. Uh, Voyagers. Voyagers is probably me and Ed's favorite, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'll throw up a picture of this of the Voyagers here. Now, they had a uh, a ham and turkey meal. The turkey, of course, had gravy. Uh, had a cranberry uh, stuffing. It was a little bit more cranberries than the other, uh, the Sea Fire had. And then they came with corn and uh, a, a roll, um, which, was, which was incredible. Just really good food. Um, and then uh, the Sea Fire Inn, or the Spice Mill, excuse me, the Spice Mill oh. had a turkey burger. Is that bacon? With bacon. Oh. And then it had a cranberry salsa with it, which was, I didn't care for the turkey burger. The cranberry salsa was pretty good. 
um, and that comes with fries. And all of these meals, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, let me throw up uh, some of the prices. Let me throw up some of the signs because I took pictures of all the signs. There's, there's the uh, the meal there, uh, Voyagers. Here's, so most of the meals were 10.99. This is, of course, you can see the Seafire sign that I have up here on there. Most of the meals were 10.99. If I'm not mistaken, Voyagers was the same price. Um, but if you look on the, uh, actually 14.99 for the Voyagers meal. If you look at the uh, the website, you can see these on here. Now, the key thing to note about these holiday meals is they are included in the meal deal pa pass. Um, that was how me and Ed got to try all the meals because we had the meal deal pass that day. So it's really cool if you want to, you know, really get into the holiday spirit, go to SeaWorld, get the meal deal pass, and have some of these holiday meals. Um, they also have other things around the park for you to try as well. One of the other things that we tried the other night um, that they have at uh, SeaWorld was um, they have a couple of things. Uh, one of the coolest things they had was a s'mores cobbler. Um, and I have a picture of that somewhere, but there was a s'mores cobbler, uh, which was basically uh, it toasted was marshmallows, a graham cracker, and then it was just covered, swimming, drowning. Here's the, shall we say? Here's the picture of it. You can see it's, it's. That was no, that wasn't a picture of the. That was just a picture of yeah, kind what, of what they like. were serving. But that's without. That's without it. It's swimming in chocolate. Yeah, it was swimming in chocolate. Oh. It was uh, graham crackers. It was all warm. It was toasted marshmallows. It was delicious. But the absolute star of the evening, star of the evening, and if you go to SeaWorld for the Christmas celebration, you must go to this. If you avoid everything else and go to this booth, is is this right here, is the bread. Um, they have a bread there. It's called like the Daily Bread Bakery. And they have multiple different kinds of bread. Uh, they have like a chocolate bread and like a sourdough bread and just different kinds of bread. And they have different toppings and spreads and things of that nature. Now, this one we had here was a, uh, a cranberry uh, jam, if I'm not mistaken, on a chocolate bread with, uh, with the, the chocolate gravy, which was really good. And then uh, you can kind of see the prices up here. You can actually buy the whole loaves of bread or they'll give you the little strips of bread. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, I actually have another picture on here um, of the bread. Uh, the second time we went back, we got some more bread. Uh, we actually got a pretzel bread here with bacon and, uh, and chocolate. The girl said it was good. You knew good. that was coming. And it was pretty good. And then uh, they had like a blueberry. They made like a blueberry cream. It was like a blueberry jam with uh, like graham crackers sprinkled on top. And then it was on like the sourdough bread. And then it had like a cream, uh, like cheesecake sauce on top. Would which that was be considered really good. like three toppings there with the sprinkling of graham crackers? I, or? It was. It was still three ninety nine. Oh, okay. It's, it's a pretty good deal if you're a pass holder. It's, or even if you're not, it's only a dollar more. It's three ninety nine for pass holders. I believe four ninety nine for non pass holders. So really cool stuff there. The bread is really good. It was tasty. Um, it it, it yeah. is really tasty. Um, I you know it's nice and warm and hot. They bring it out. It's just really cool stuff. So definitely check that out. There are various other booths around, and the it's in the same area where they have their events, uh, where they have the summer events. They have this the Halloween events. It's that same area there. That's where the bread is. They have a kettle corn booth. They have a mm -hmm. one booth that's serving uh, alcoholic uh, drinks. Uh, it had like hot toddies and stuff like that. They also had hot chocolate, uh, very good hot chocolate there. Um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, other booths there. There were other booths. I don't think there was any other booths. Can you think of any other booths around the park that you saw, Ed? I got nothing. Nothing <laughs> that you saw. Okay. I didn't. I think there was other food booths. I don't think there was any other holiday themed food booths. Yeah, not. Not, not that I know of, except for the restaurants had. You know, Christmas cookies, which their Christmas cookies were actually really good. Um, had a couple of those. Those were really good. I actually had a lot of those all day. So that was really good. Um, you know, so the food, uh, they really stepped it up. Even the Sharks restaurant has a holiday dinner, um, which is $46 for uh, adults. But it includes uh, all the uh, – it's, it's, like it's, like it's like a three-course meal, yeah. So that's really cool. Um, so – other than other than the food, they have a lot of stuff going on. Um, the park is really well themed. Um, they have uh, all kinds of different uh, lights around the park. 
The uh, lights were really cool because off the trees they had like what looked like Spanish moss. Yeah. But it was actually they were actually lights, and they uh, they showed the lights like you know just flashing at you, mm-hmm. or you know made it look like it was uh, falling, and it was really cool. Stars all yeah. over the place. Uh huh. Very well themed. I mean, not um, like, and you could see like some million, lights here. Not like a million billion lights, like. Uh, and the trees Osborne, and the but. trees were always lit unless they were doing a show. Then they would they would flicker. Um, one of the other things they had too was uh, they had this thing in the front where it was like a snow globe, and you got <laughs> in and you got to have a picture. And I got a picture in that the first day, and uh, you get to throw the snow in the air and they get your picture, and it's really cool, like you in a snow globe. That was really that was really fun. Except the snow, when you get it in your hair, it's very hard to get it out. <laughs> Um, and then there was various theming all over the park, just, you know, random Christmas trees. Almost all the gift shops and things were themed. Um, they had these Santa Shamu hats that were really cool, uh, whale tail Santa hats, um, just really cool stuff, uh, you know, just themed all around the park, you know. And you can go on the Mickey Updates uh, Twitter, or excuse me, Flickr uh, stream and look at all the photos and, and see for yourself a lot of the Christmas stuff. It's too much for me to do. In one show, just now, the, just the theming alone. What was really cool is when we were at the uh, the meet and greet there, and we met Terry. He was talking about how the the he was so proud of the team at SeaWorld and how they could go from the spooktacular, you know, go from Halloween to Christmas in basically three weeks to yeah. strip everything out of there and and just totally change the theme and. Uh, with the magnitude of stuff that they had to do, that's an absolutely amazing accomplishment. Yeah. Now, one thing that was really cool that they had going on there, um, you know, and it has to do kind of with theming, is they rethemed the Wild Arctic Ride to the Polar Express Experience. Um, me and Mark have b- both rode this ride. Ed has seen the video because he did the walkthrough. Um, it was just a really cool experience. They put, um, they've put up, like, you know, even... Uh over the old theming of like you're you know going into a thing there to get into a, a helicopter they've they've put you know new stuff in front of that to make it look yep. like you're getting onto a train and yep. when you actually get into the thing instead of it looking kind of like a helicopter inside they've got it all themed like an old time you know uh train car exactly uh, with things draped all over the place and uh, uh, which, it, which, which car would you it say was, is the dining car I would say the dining car it looked like could it could have been the dining right, car right, right, it right. definitely well, was the caboose they they if you watch the video the car that you're in changed from a regular car to the dining car they, with magic yeah it was really cool i actually have to say i like the polar express better than ride than, than i actually like the wild arctic ride here's some of the pictures of the that's it right there. Ride. That's actually the uh, inside. That's the yeah inside of the ride. And there's we have video. We t- I took video of the ride itself, so you can look at this online. There's the theming on the outside to make and it look get like it, you're get, at the get an uh, idea station. of what the ride looks like. So just really really cool stuff. Um, you know the ride was really awesome. Uh, it's not as jerky as the Wild Arctic ride. Um, it's not as intense, but it it's still a really fun ride. And Tom Hanks is in there. Tom Hanks was awesome in the ride. It was just really, really yeah, fun stuff. Everything says is funny. Um, so, um, and now when you exit the ride, it's still the, you know, they still have the animals and stuff out there, but they also have Santa. Uh, Santa. You can get your picture with Santa. That's where you get him right out there. That big red thing that's behind everybody is a big old sack of toys. Yes. So you can see, see Santa. Um, he's out there. It's really awesome. Um, go in there and see him. Get your picture with Santa. All that great stuff. Um, that was just a really cool themed area. Now, um, one of the things that SeaWorld did really well um, was shows. And I'm going to start off with the smaller shows, um, the Christmas shows that they did. And one of the things that they did um, in front of the Polar Express ride, they have uh, the conductors. It's a four-man, uh, like a uh, Dapper Dan's type show uh, where they have – it's just a cappella. And they were singing Christmas songs, and it was really, they were really good. Um, they have a couple of acapella groups that sing the Christmas songs, but they had these guys doing the Christmas songs. And one of the things that they did is they, uh, there's a new song, it, it goes, I'm sexy and I know it, or something. Well, they changed it to, I'm Santa and I know it, which is really <laughs> awesome. And I have video of that. I think I put that online. If not, I will get that online. So that's really cool. These guys were really awesome. Uh, they, they, their singing was just phenomenal. Um, I got my picture with them. 
really cool guys. So definitely check that out if you're by that area. They do shows all throughout the day, so that's really cool. Now, walking through um, in front of Voyagers and that whole area there, I know Mark saw this. Um, there's just stuff going on everywhere. I mean, literally stuff going on everywhere. You walk up to that area, and there's like some elves doing a show. And then you walk down a little ways. They had and another then, and quartet then there was, of people. There's a quartet. There's like a band, like a like a three piece band. And then, the, and then there was the uh, guys came came out on stilts playing drums and yeah, stuff like that. And yeah, then they, and then uh, there, I mean, literally, you walk five feet, and there's another something else going on. Two elves with a jumping, spinning, flip back, flippy kind of stilts that they had on were really cool. I mean, that's kind of what impressed me a lot about the Sea World thing is they're really trying hard. They're pulling out all the stops. Um, there's just tons they, they, they and really tons did. of it Christmas was, stuff it, it just was going on everywhere. And, you know, if you, you, if you go in there, a uh, humbug and come out, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a non Scrooge, I mean, it's just, it's just really cool stuff. So, you know, there's stuff going on everywhere. And even when you leave the park, these smaller venues, they, they, they had like a jazz band that didn't have sax and all that. They were right outside as you were leaving the park playing Christmas music and stuff like that. Um, so it was tubas, <laughs> tubas. tubas. <laughs> One of the other things that they had that was really cool, uh, and this was right by the, uh, the, uh, right in the area where they usually have the Halloween spectacular stuff, and they had the Christmas area. They had these Nutcracker like mime guys, yep. and I got my picture with one. Yep. And they and they uh, march up and down. Go ahead, Ed. Oh, oh well, on those guys, um, they they're very. They're very reminiscent of, they used to have this at um, Epcot um, in France. It had like a, a guy dressed up as a statue, and, and when, it, when you're about to take a picture, he would move, you know. Well, in some respects, yes. Yes. Because when they start, when they got there, they would walk up and down, and they would walk like, you know, like, toy soldiers. Yes. And, and it was really cool, yeah. and we got video of Ed uh, walking behind one, and they were really funny. They yeah. did all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, he has, the, sorry. Yes, video from that day walking when I'm walking behind him, and then yet the other day I was walking beside him, and it, and it was funny because I was walking like them beside him, and the funny part is they wave, but when they waved, you know, still doing like they're still really in character, and they waved at the same time. Yeah, nice. yes. So, they they were just awesome. You can those guys are right by the water there. Usually where they have the characters there uh, for Halloween Spooktacular or one of the other events, um, they had these guys there. So that was really cool. Um, like I said, a lot of booths. They had a lot of Christmas shopping opportunities uh, in that area, too, like decorations and things like that uh, that were SeaWorld themed. Um, and they also had the food. They had kettle corn. Um, the kettle corn booth was interesting because the guys that were working the kettle corn booth, they were working this huge kettle, and they had to wear, like, this protective face mask to protect them from the corn, like, shooting them in the face. So that was really interesting stuff. Um, and uh, this is one of the booths here. Did Hazard pay for that? Yeah. <laughs> this is the booth I was talking about earlier. Um, you can see they have uh, After Dinner Mint, which was one of the drinks. They had a Bailey's Irish Coffee, uh, Colonial Coffee. I don't can't see necessarily what's in that. Uh, go, cranberry Hot Toddy and a Mint Hot Chocolate. Mm. So those were, uh, of course, alcoholic drinks. Um, and then they had the hot, the cider and all that stuff. But, you know, they really have the, they really go out with the cider drinks and stuff like that, which realistically with Disney, when you go to the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party, they, they have, I think they have cider at the booth yes, and I, I think hot chocolate and then the cookies are, are carrot slices. Um, but that's it, you know, and they don't really have a lot of the booths mm -hmm. like this or really carrot go, slices. or really go above and beyond to have this stuff out there. So. Uh, that was really cool. And then now, I guess we could go into the big shows that they had there. Um, they had a lot. They, had, they of course, they rethemed all the shows. Um, we the only show we didn't see two of the shows, uh, but we saw the big ones. Uh, we missed the Clyde. What did we miss. We missed the Clyde and Seymour show. Oh, uh, there's a Clyde and Seymour Christmas show, oh, we and then there was a Sesame Street. Uh, what was the Sesame Street show at the oh, Petzl Theater? Count, count down the Christmas. Count oh. down the Christmas. Yeah, we missed that. Um, but they have this the Countdown to Christmas show, and then they have the Clyde and Seymour show, which I'm really upset because every time I go to they have an event, I miss the Clyde and Seymour show. You got show. to see Clyde. Well, you stood no, next to him. No, hey, that Augie. was Oogie. Augie. 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 Augie plays Clyde. Oh, he does? Yeah, Augie plays Clyde. I kept plays, telling him that it was Clyde. Clyde. See, Ed, I told you it was that. Clyde. No. Yep. I told you. 
So Augie was Clyde. Yeah, you were calling him Clyde. He's like, yeah, he plays Clyde, but his real name is Augie. Oh. I don't know if that confuses oh my gosh, the sea Ed. lion or not, but uh, having a few different names. So uh, we saw the shows. Um, the We started out uh, the, well, that Friday Kobe night. is his last name. His first name is Clyde. Okay. Augie. Um, I want to st- call him Oogie. Okay. We started out the, the, uh, that Friday night with um, a uh, with the Oh Wondrous Night Show. Now, this show is called The Greatest Story Never Told, and it's basically, um, as you would expect from SeaWorld, it's from the standpoint of the animals. Uh, the animals are telling the story of how they helped in uh, baby Jesus being born uh, or the Christmas story happening. The bird, um, a sheep, and a donkey. And a camel. Camel oh, got in there too. At the, the camel end, got in yeah. There too. Yeah. Um, it was a dove. A it was a dove, a sheep, a donkey. No, the sheep was the. Was yeah, it? the sheep was in there. But was the sheep a baby? Which one was the baby? The goat. The goat. Okay. So um, the sheep, the donkey, the dove, and then the camel, and the goat was the baby, and uh, he was trying to. F- he's saying, "Oh, I wish I was born or alive to see this all go down." And they were telling him the story of what happened and so on and so forth. And, um, I, you know, it's a 30-minute show. Um, it? It's very reminiscent of a, a church, uh, you know, Christmas pageant. It's very uh, true to the Bible and the Christmas story. Um, you know, they go the through the great whole story. ensemble of talent. Oh, you know, just the, fantastic the, the chorus show. chorus was great. The, the lead singers were great. If you look on YouTube, the video's up. You can see the whole it's show. It's fantastic. It, it was a really good show, uh, you know, but it was a, a, it was a church show. Um, you know, a lot of people online were complaining, after, or were complaining afterwards about the, the churchiness of the show. But it's Christmas. You know, that's what, you know, it's part of Christmas. It's, it's the story of Christmas, so. I have no problems with that. I have no problem with it. I'm just. I'm but glad it was a great World show. Took a stand and said, um, "We don't. You know, we're going to do it." Yeah, and, that's and the, it was. It that's was a that. new show this year, and it was great. It was. Great. It was fantastic, fantastic show. Um, I think the highlight for me of the show was the end of the show, um, because they, you know, they had the donkey and the dove and all these things, and they actually brought real live animals into the show. So they had the. They brought the donkey in, and then they brought the sheep and the goat. And then at the at the very end, they brought in three camels for the three wise men, which was really cool. They had these huge camels, huge. and they brought them down the uh, the main aisles of the show. They didn't come from the back. They came down the main aisles of the show and just right down past everybody, and there was these huge camels. And, I mean, it was that was actually really cool. Was I was impressed. impressed. Very impressed. I was very impressed with the animals that they had for that show. Um, you know, they, they said at the beginning of the show, we need to keep the aisles clear. We need to keep the aisles clear. Uh, it was really cool. I, I thought that was probably one of the best things. So um, just an awesome, awesome show. Definitely, um, I, would you rate it a must-see? Uh, if you want to get into the Holy Spirit, I would rate it a must-see. Yes, if you can mind the church stuff. Yeah, if you can mind the Christmas story, then it's a must-see for and a good you, Christmas and if story. if you can't, then skip it. But you know, um, Now, yeah, if you can't, skip it. Now, the other show... Uh, the other show that we saw was the Shamu Miracle Show, which is not a new show. They've had this before, um, and we have an interesting story about that. Um, but this not is about a re- the saxophone this is a, player. Is it? This is a really cool show. <laughs> oh, we have that too. Forgot about that. Um, at the beginning of the show, at the beginning of the show, before you go into the the uh, stage, um, there is a saxophone guy playing, and he's playing Christmas tunes, and he is phenomenal. And before that, they have Christmas karaoke. They have karaoke on the screen with Christmas songs. Um, just really cool. Like even the start of the show is just really cool. I really enjoyed the show, by the way. Um, and then they get to the saxophone guy. So Ed is the Ed and and Mark had gone to get there. We had some Shamu bucks to use. Uh, Ten dollars of Shamu oh, yeah, bucks. Oh yeah, that's another so thing that we got for the press event. Bucks, yep. Yep, the Shamu bucks. Yep. So we used the Shamu bucks to get the uh, s'mores cobbler. And uh, Ed and Mark went to go get the s'mores cobbler. They come back. And the guy's playing the saxophone. Now, and this Ed- whole time, though, this whole time, even before when, when we left the stadium to uh, get in line to go get the cobbler, Ed's just telling me that this is David Cause. David Cause. So, and it's not David Cause. Yeah, you know, he's like, yeah, you can enjoy some light jazz saxophone from David Cause. So next thing you know, we, we got the cobbler. We're walking back in. 
And the saxophone guy, they got a camera on him, and you can see him on the big screen. Plus, you can see him. He's, he's like, right next to me. He's walking up the aisle, and I'm thinking, hey, this is kind of cool. I'm really close to David Cause. <laughs> Only to find out much later that it's just a saxophone player. It's not really David yeah, Cause at all. Yeah, it's not Dave Cause. I told him this later. I was like, what are you, th- what are you talking about, Dave Cause? I didn't get to see – you got to see Dave Cause. I Kaz. thought Dave Cause had a great gig working at SeaWorld. <laughs> Um, if you look at the, if you look at the, if you hold on one sec, uh, just as a side note, if you look at the feed, I just found out that, uh, we, I just looked and we do have some pictures of the camels that's and not, stuff from the show. That's not Dave. That's Cos. not Dave Cos, but there, <laughs> there you can see from the wondrous night show. But yeah, Ed thought it was, Ed told him it was Dave Cos, and I told him like in the parking lot or something. It's not Dave. Kaz. I totally believed it. Look, look, Mark, I just call certain people. Like I show you certain things, certain things. If I see like in the. A cyclist who wears all the gear. I call him Lance. That's Armstrong. Lance, yeah. Yeah, so so I see a saxophone player. I'm gonna call him Dave Cos. There you go. Yeah. But uh, Look at Dave but it, Cos over there. It was it was not Dave Cos, but uh, that's a that's a whole different issue. Um, so it was his brother. So we go through the show. The show starts <laughs> out. Cos. The show starts out, and they have um, they say, you know, they ask these kids what's a miracle, and all this stuff, and they go into uh, one of them says tartar sauce. They go into a uh, whole this whole thing of of you know what's a miracle blah blah blah, which is which was really cool, um, and then they ask these kids you know what would you do for a miracle or something and one kid says something like uh, uh, get rid of global warming or, or cure global warming or something like that, which was interesting. Um, so, um, and then they go through this whole thing like what's a miracle? Say, what, what was a miracle? Didn't one of them say tartar sauce? Yeah, someone said tartar sauce. <laughs> <laughs> but this is all in the video. If you guys can check this out, I think one of them said tartar sauce, and then they get into like this the music, and then they have you know Shamu swims around, and if you're sitting in the splash zone, he splashes you, and he comes around, and they start out, and then Shamu uh, slides across. I really like this too when Shamu slides across the front there. Oh, it's very cool. Yeah, he's really cool when he cool. does that. Yeah, Shamu is really cool. I like. Truthfully, Shamu. it's not just about the uh, the uh, the whales. It's a combination. Stuff like it's, it's a combination of a Christmas visual. show. Uh, with some other visuals, and then Shamu, and it's it's really really good. I mean, it's it's a high quality, really really awesome show. It was chilly that night too. I'll tell you that it wasn't. I wouldn't say cold. Vermont gets cold. This was the, Florida never gets cold. Can it was just get, chilly. It can get chilly, and when they had uh, the the whales and Shamu do the tail flip thing there and splash people, I have never seen the water go as far up into the yep. audience as I yep. had seen it that night. So It was amazing. So and Parents um, actually let their kids sit down there. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. Kids were getting absolutely drenched with water yeah. on this chilly night. So, so one of I'm the sure things, too... I'm sure they didn't make it to school on Monday. <laughs> one of the things, too, after they did that intro, uh, intro with some Christmas music and so on and so forth... They got into the next thing and they asked him about miracles again, and they said miracles should be big or something. The kid said big, and then one girl got on there and she didn't say anything. She just went like made this face that was really funny, and um, and then and then of course whenever you you're at the Shamu show and you hear the words big, or splash or something of that nature, uh, that's the part of the show where Shamu is going to intentionally try to get you soaking wet. So that started that, and that is the point that Mark is talking about, where they kick that water so high, and you know they have the split section there where it's got that middle there where the handicapped people sit. I feel sorry because those handicapped people got wet; <laughs> they got wet. So um, that, 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 that was first definitely interesting. Section of seats that had to go at least three quarters of the way up. No, it went. Uh, it went all people, the way to people the. People were just getting. It went all the way to the. Uh, it was causing a panic to the middle. Anarchy. So, so that was really cool um, section there, and then they then they have this one section, then they have this one uh, part at, near the end, and I, I'm gonna tell the story on this. Um, this is probably the funniest story, and if you watch the video, you will hear this. So we're th- this is the first time we had seen the show, and and there's this really uh, nice uh, singer, uh, uh, like gospel singer lady, who gets up there. And she's just singing, and she and she goes into, you know, the thing. There will be miracles when you believe. So she just did so, it better than that. Yeah, she did a lot better <laughs> than that. And um, she starts singing Way that, better. and um, she does it kind of slow, and then she shouts out, "Are you ready for a miracle?" And then Ed, to is to my right, and you can see this in the video. He jumps out of his seat, literally jumps out of his seat. 
and just starts screaming, testify, testify. And they're playing the song from uh, the movie Hercules. Uh, Are you ready for a miracle? They're playing the song from the movie Hercules. And um, I think it's from the movie Hercules. And um, yeah. and uh, and they're he's just screaming and shouting, testify, testify. And if you watch the video, um, you'll see this. Um, you can hear him screaming this. And me and the lady next to me are just laughing. And he is just like feeling it. I mean, he is like in his element. He is just having a good time. So um, when we went back the second time, and we went with the same friends. Uh, we went with the friends we went with last time. Uh, my buddy James and his friend Nolan, who actually works at Epcot, um, which is weird going to SeaWorld with the guy that works at Epcot. Kind of weird. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, uh, and we're Mickey Updates going yeah. to SeaWorld to do a whole press event. So yeah. we got actually a little static for that, too. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Ed, Ed, James and, 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 and C's is waiting for Ed to just freak out because he didn't see it last time. But he saw Ed just jumped out of his seat and started screaming, and we all started screaming. And, and by the end of the show, we were all it was hands, infectious. All, all <laughs> at the end of the show, we were all standing up, hands in the air, screaming, "Testify, testify!" I mean, the whole row was just screaming, and we're in the like platinum seating, and we're just having a blast. I have to tell you that show. I mean, the end of the show. It's just such a high energy show. It just gets you really pumped. It's just an amazing, amazing show. That is a must see. It is a must that see. That is the. That's a, a that non-negotiable. The, you have to go see. You that have show. to I see mean, that. You're, gonna, you're there really if you're at Sea World. You're there to see Shamu. But that was see the just show. just like Shamu Rocks is a non non-negotiable. Have to see. Oh yeah, that, um, that was a have to see. Um, you have to see this. Um, now, um, the way that the night works out at Sea World, if you you can plan it out perfectly for Christmas, is at eight fifteen they have the. Uh, the O Wondrous Night Show, so you go see that at 8.15, and then after that, you go over to the Shamu thing, which is at 9.30, so you get there about 9, uh, if you if you hustle over there, and you can get a good seat, and you sit there for about 30 minutes, and then you have the show, and then after that, um, you go right over to the uh, stadium, and at 10.30, they have the ice show, uh, which is the, uh, I can't remember the name of the ice show, but Winter Wonderland, Winter Wonderland on Ice, yes, Winter Wonderland on Ice. Which is the name of the ice show? Skating in a winter wonderland. So um, that is really awesome. Um, they they basically do like a whole ice show. Now for me, uh, this was really fun because um, I personally have never seen a ice show. Uh, this was my first ice show. Uh, I probably saw some when I was a kid, and I don't remember. I'm sure I've seen like Disney on Ice or something, but this is my first ice show. It was at SeaWorld. It was really cool. Um, they come out and they do all these different uh, routines and uh, they spin around and jump in the air and do flips and, and all kinds of crazy acrobatics that I could never even imagine doing on ice or on ice skates. And the whole time, all I can think of is shattered ankles, shattered ankles, shattered ankles. Um, I mean, not to be. I've seen know, hundreds of ice shows. You know, hundreds. And it was different. Well, every I live in time. Florida. It was different every single time. Because it was a warm ice show. No, because it was hockey. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but, um, hockey. So they so they come out and they and they start out with, uh, you know, their their like main skit here, and they have people do you know all this stuff, and then there's one scene where they come out and it's the song from uh, from uh, Home, Home Alone, Alone. and uh, the girl skates to that a redhead uh, redheaded girl skates to that, and then they have this one skit that's kind of cool where the soldier comes home and and sees his girlfriend. Uh, it's like a World War II type theme. Well, that was cool because they were skating around. You had like a the collegiate kind of guy there skating with this girl, yep. and everybody was paired up. And you did, you know, I actually consciously noticed there was one girl skating around, and she didn't have a partner. So I thought it was really cool how they worked that in. Because uh, yeah. next thing you know, the soldier guy comes in and he skates out, and uh, and uh, now she has a partner. So they had uh, four couples out there. Yeah, so it was really cool. That that whole scene was was really neat. Um, they brought him out on ice. Now, one thing to note too, before um, the actual ice show started, um, there is a acapella, another acapella group. Uh, I forget their name. There Jingle was bells. Jingle bells. Yes. Jingle bells and bows. Jingle bells and bows. Yeah. Yes. Jingle they were singing bows. at the beginning there, and they're actually pretty good. They actually do a pretty good show. Um, not the best, but they're actually pretty good. Um, pretty good show. They sing a couple Christmas songs and 
did their routine, and it was pretty good. You can see them actually in the park as well. That I saw them throughout the night in front of the the, the pizza garden buffet. It was good. It was very jazz like. Yeah, it was like very jazz like. Christmas acapella meets uh, Manhattan transfer acapella. Yeah. So after they uh, after after uh, they had all that, and then they had the the whole skit, and then they had the World War II skit. Uh, the, it was time. Uh, they had like a 